Welcome. I'm Dee Perry, welcoming you to the Cleveland International Film Festival's official podcast, Civ Speaks. I'm Dee Perry, and I'm here with my producer, Aaron Spears. Hey, Aaron. Hello. Hello, film fans. And it is day six, Aaron, of SIF 43. And uh, as we're watching it unfold in real time now, we keep going uh, back and forth to um, festival memories. Um, is, is there one that stands out for you? Yeah, I was thinking of the prime reason I first was coming to the festival was obviously for the films. Then, like we said on previous episodes, you kind of find the community that's around it. And when I would first started coming up here, I was fresh out of uh, film school, film theory and history. And there was actually a film movement going on at the time that the film festival provided me access to, which was the Dogma 95 movement out of Denmark. Very briefly, the movement was this thing that uh, Thomas Wittenberg and Lars von Trier, the two directors, had started. You had to commit as a filmmaker to their vow of chastity, they called it. Ten rules that you had to strictly adhere to to make a movie. It was like no artificial action, so there could be no murder, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So the concentration was on character development and story. And over the years, the festival uh, allowed me access to like Kira's Reason, A Love Story, Open Hearts, Jippo. And it was so fascinating to be able to see in real time a current film movement that was, you know, kind of peaking, honestly, at that point. And it did sort of trail off. Harmony Corinne had made a movie that was uh, not at the festival, but in that in that vein. But it, it just felt like a great place in film history was taking was happening and, and I had access to because we had this great festival here in town. Yeah. And and I, I love the way the festival connects you to all the threads that make up life the the history the science the the human emotion um sports even oh absolutely yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. The home opener is at 410. You want to avoid bringing your car downtown on opening day of for the Cleveland Indians any given year. So RTA and Lyft are definitely the ways to get downtown to the festival today. Yeah, great heads up. And also, um, if you're at the festival today, you might see um, lots of students hanging around on, on any given day, as a matter of fact. And Beth Steele Radisek, um is part of the reason that that happens. Um, Beth is special programs director for the festival, but she also coordinates a, a thing called Film Slam. Wearing a lot of hats at the festival, I'm sure, keeps you really busy. But um, the hat I want to have you put on right now is uh, the one related to Film Slam. How did that come about? Well, I think when I started volunteering 22 years ago, I volunteered in the morning. And on a couple of the mornings, I saw all these students coming in. And I was like, what is this? And from the minute I saw it, I loved it because I couldn't imagine being in high school, coming to see amazing foreign language films with my class and, you know, and getting to have a Q&A afterwards. So I think the first time I ever saw it 22 years ago, I, I loved it. And I just, you know, that is the one thing I always came back to volunteer with. And I always tried to keep a part of. And about, I would say about 15 or so years ago, the person that was managing it left. And they're like, do you want to do it? And I was like, yes, I do. And it's, it's so much fun to be a part of like bringing high schoolers to the film festival and now middle school students. So it's, it's a, it's a big piece of my heart. How does it physically work? I mean, do the schools reach out to the festival? Do you reach out to schools? So we have a big list of about 5,000 teachers that will do a postcard in the fall and say, Hey, film slams, you know, whatever dates, March 28th, 29th and then April 1st through the 5th this year and then um, you know it just puts it on their radar and it lets them know we're also going to do a teacher's workshop with the date and any other kind of little incidentals like the cost which is five dollars it's been the same you know for as long as I can remember and that we offer um, CMSD free transportation and tickets to their students so that postcard goes out in the fall and then we'll follow up again in January saying hey it's it's time to schedule and they'll all just start calling me emailing me and we'll make um you know the reservations I try to make it really easy you know you know there's no hoops for them to jump 
through. They just say, hey, I have 150 kids I want to bring down on this day, and I'll make sure we can fit them in to see the film they want to see. This is one aspect of the festival that I love so much, but I've never personally been a part of it because I was not a student coming to, to see movies here. But coming to some of the early morning screenings, seeing the students all file in, there's got to be an element where there's some students seeing like their first foreign film, a foreign film for the very first time. Uh, coming to the festival. So how do you kind of guide them through the that whole experience as they're coming in? Uh, you know, and obviously we do introductions to all the films and, and you said uh, Q&As afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do, how do you kind of manage that part? Well, the teachers before they even come to Film Slam get a study guide that is prepared for whatever they're seeing. So if they're seeing Spanish shorts, it's usually three of the Spanish shorts that are in the study guide. So I'm sure the teachers talk to their students about the films before they're going to see them. And so they arrive in um, just the last couple of years, we now have greeters. So besides the people that walk them in the theater, we have greeters that speak whatever language the program they're going to oh, see. Okay. So if they're coming to see French films or Russian films, um, we have greeters that will walk in between all of them and speak that language. So we immerse them from the time they get to Film Slam until they go to their seats. And so um, they go in, they see their film, and then they end up like having, I, I really try to make the films something special so that it really sticks with them. And I like to end it on scary films. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> just because I feel like it really grabs them. Yeah. But um, just when they come out of the films, they're all so different they're chatty and the emails i get back from the teachers about the bus ride home oh i bet are the best because i mean i just recently saw one of the teachers at the teacher workshop and she said one of her students knew every f french short that they had seen last year and talked about each one like you know details and I was like how does she remember i don't remember all the films from last year so it's really to me, I love when the teachers always, you know, all year round, they email me. And some teachers love it so much, they say that the as soon as school starts in the fall, that's the first question the kids will say, are we going to the film festival this oh, year? Nice. And I think, you know, if you don't have parents to bring you to like an artsy program, yeah. like how lucky for us that you have these teachers that love the festival, I feel like as much as I do. And so they, you know, make sure that they get permission and get to bring their students down every year. We well, also just geographically, you have schools coming in from quite a distance. They're like, do you know like offhand what one of the farthest distances is traveled by well, school? We or? have two schools from PA that come. Oh, wow. Okay. But I think there might be, the furthest might be from Louisville. Really? It's Louisville High School, which okay. is pretty far. Yeah. But the cool thing about that is, you know how far they've come because we have a map out in the hallway. So the big walkway when you're coming in before you get to the theaters, we have a big red map. And it shows the distance of every school and how far they've come. Because there's probably not a lot of foreign film accessibility, like in a theatrical environment, right. to a lot of these, a lot of these areas, and that are appropriate. Well, that's true and too, that's yeah. what we right. are trying to find. Beth, you've talked about what an impact it it has on on the students and on the on the teachers, but I want to get a sense of why you think this program is important, why it should continue. It speaks their language. I mean, they're learning, they're learning about other cultures, because if they're coming to see the Spanish shorts, they're not just seeing like one piece of Spain. They could see like so many different elements of Spain or, you know, wherever the the film is from. So it's not just an hour of one film. They're going to see five to seven short films of different areas and just a totally different way of life it's like almost like going around the world you know if you come to film slam there's so many different films for teachers to bring their students to and i also think just meeting the filmmakers you know because they're so happy to be there and part of the festival and they love talking to the kids a lot of times if it's you know advanced students they'll speak to them in the language they came to see the film in which I can't imagine, like for the teachers, how happy they are. You know, they get to have the kids have that dialogue with the filmmakers in Spanish or French or Chinese or Russian, Arabic. So it's a lot of fun. Beth, what kind of support are you seeing for the film slams? So Film Slam is 27 years old this year, and we're so lucky um, to have some of the funders we've had over the years that have really pushed us. Um, for instance, Martha Holden Jennings Foundation, 
without them, I, I, I can't imagine we'd be where we are at today. Because of them, we have a teacher's workshop. So in um, this past February, we had about 80 teachers at the Ritz for a teacher's workshop. And they really focused on an introduction to gender, gender and media studies. And it's because of the Martha Holden Jennings Foundation that's really pushed us to make Film Slam more educational for teachers and for the students. And last year, we had um, 10,000, over 10,600 students come through Film Slam, and we're hoping to have more this year. I'm so glad you had a chance to tell us about um, Film Slam and, and other things behind the scenes at the Cleveland International Film Festival. Beth, thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. Now, the festival has all sorts of special programs going on on any given day. And Aaron, uh, today, one of those special programs is uh, the Film Forum. And today's is on a topic that I've heard something about but don't really understand. Which is uh, always the point of a good documentary and a good conversation afterwards. Today's Film Forum is Trust Machine, the story of blockchain at 6.45 p.m. If you've heard the term cryptocurrency but aren't really sure exactly what cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin is kind of tossed around as well. Uh, This is the time to come and watch a a really good, solid documentary and then also have a really fruitful conversation uh, about that topic afterwards. And the topic specifically today is, will blockchain change the world? (laughs) And I would answer only if they can explain what it is. There you go. (laughs) So so maybe I should see that film. I wonder if Lyft takes blockchain somewhere <laughs> in the crypto future. Currency, cryptocurrency, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, you can find out um, if you are coming to the festival by RTA or Lyft. And by the way, those are the easiest ways to arrive in style at SIF 43. Now, all RTA trains and many bus lines provide direct service to Tower City Center, and our official rideshare, Lyft, offers discounts for existing customers uh, by using the code lyft 2 SIF. And for new customers, Lyft SIF Newbie. To keep up with everything SIF, visit clevelandfilm.org, follow SIF on social media, or use the SIF app. I'm Dee Perry. I'm Aaron Spears. And thanks for listening to SIF Speaks.